How are we doing everyone? It's John again. Um, I'm going to do a quick video on AAA, which is Authentication, Authorization and Accounting. In this video, I'm going to do a short video and configure a Radius server. So, let's start. As you can see, the basic topology is quite simple. We've got two routers here and a server up here. They're all on the same network. The addresses are 192.168.1.1, 192.168.1.2 and 192.168.1.3 up the top. So, let's kick off and just check that we actually have connectivity between the devices. So, ping 192.168.1.2, that's fine, and let's ping the server, that's also fine. So, the first thing that we want to do is go to the actual server and configure the AAA. So, go up to services, AAA, services on, and what we want to do is configure the client name. Now, the way this is going to work is we're going to configure R1 to use the Radius server. So R2 is going to SSH in and R1 is going to essentially authenticate with the server which will deliver back the credentials and allow access. So when we're configuring the client name we're going to be using R1 and R1's client IP address which is 192.168.1.1. The secret Secret is essentially the password that needs to match on both the server and the router. That is a way that the, both devices can authenticate with one another. So we'll do that. The password, secret password, we'll use something simple like Cisco. Server type, we can use Radius or TACAX. In this demonstration, I'm going to be doing uh, Radius. So we'll just do that and add. Now, the username, I suppose at this point, I should kind of make a, a bit of a point on why you would use a Radius server. See, in a, well, in a small topology like this, it really isn't worth it to do it, but for the sake of demonstration, I'm keeping it simple. But if you had to imagine you were in a, a large company whereby you had lots and lots of uh, users with usernames and password combinations and lots of devices, if you had to go into every single router and type in every single username and password combination, it would take a long time. Plus, there's also an issue with scalability. If you start adding in routers, you need to go in locally and configure um, all the username and passwords for every single new router. Whereas, if you use AAA, all you need to do is tell the new router to use the the Radius server, and that's it. It's way, way simpler. So, let's start off and add in some usernames. So, we'll just keep it simple. We'll do John, and the password, we'll do John1. Um... David, David, oh, take that right, David1, um, Mark, Mark1. Okay, that's enough. Really, you would add a lot, lot more than this, but for the sake of demonstration, let's just keep it at three. Okay, so that's configured. Let's close this down. Now, you want to go onto the actual device which will use the server, which is R1 in this case. So, maximize that. The first thing that you want to do is do AAA new model. That basically tells the router to use the server. Okay, word of warning here. Good practice when you're configuring a Radius or TACAC server is to also configure a local account in case that the server goes down and you're not locked out of the actual device. So as a backup, we'll do a username and we'll just call it backup for simplicity. And we'll do the password will be a secret password and we'll just do backup one, keep the same kind of format. Backup one. Okay, so that's the backup. That will not actually be used or actually be accessible when the Radius server is up. It will actually be denied if you try to put in these credentials when the server is actually available. However, should the server go down, the router will be configured to fall back and use these credentials so you actually can get back in without having to do a password recovery. So, let's kick on. AAA, authentication, and there's two kinds of authentication we can do here. We can do it for logging in, which is your basic just accessing the router, and for your, you know, the enable secret type thing, enable secret password. You can do it for the login and the enable password. So let's do it for both, and we'll do login, and we'll use the default group, and we're going to use a radius server, and then use local. Now, the actual order which you type these in is actually very important. Essentially, because I wrote radius first, then local second, that basically specifies the order of operations. It basically specifies that the, the router will look to use the radius server first, 
and should that not be available, we'll fall back to the local. So don't do local radius, do radius local, okay? And likewise, that was for the login. Let's now do it for the enable password. So we'll do the same thing, authentication, and we'll do enable, use default, group, and again, we want to use radius first and fall back to the local if it's not available. Now, now that that's configured, what we also need to do is essentially tell the router where to look for the radius server. So we'll use, um, we'll do radius server host and the IP address of the server is 192.168.1.3 and the key, if you remember, I believe we configured it as Cisco. So let's go into that. Yep, the key here, that needs to match on both the server and the router. So Cisco is what we're going to use here. So key, Cisco. And that should be that. Now what we're going to do is configure it for SSH only and not Telnet. So let's do an IP domain name and we'll just keep it simple, Cisco.com. And we'll do IP SSH version 2. And we'll do a crypto key generate. And we'll generate some RSA keys for 1024 bits. Okay, and we'll go into the actual line, line VTY04, and we'll transport input SSH. That essentially tells the, the router to use SSH and disallow Telnet. If we did the reverse and did Telnet, that would disallow SSH, but that's what we do not want. We want to use actually SSH. So transport input SSH. Now, here's the important part. Very often when you're using SSH, you might say log in local and tell the router to use the local database. That's not what we want to do. What we want to do is do login, authentication, and it's the default we used, if you remember. If you just skip up here, we use login and we use the default. So that's what we want to do here. So login, authentication, default, not login local. Okay, that's that. And control C, and that should be it configured. <clears throat> so let's test it now. So the first thing that I want to do is do SSH login and we're going to actually try the backup password. Remember what I said to fall back on? This should not actually be accessible just now. So we'll do backup and we'll use version 2 of SSH and we'll put the IP address down of the target which is 192.168.1.1. Password, again, this should not allow us access if I've configured this correctly. Invalid, invalid, good. Now, the ones which should work are the ones which we configured on the server, which would be David, John, and whatever the other one was. So let's keep it simple and we'll do SSH L login with John. We're using version 2 and 192.168.1.1. And the password we used was John1. And now we've got access. Similarly, when we go to do the enable, we'll also be prompted for the username and password again. So we'll do enable. Username, J-O-H-N, John1, now we have access, show run, and now we're into the actual with SSH then. Now just one final point before uh, I finish this video. What I'm going to do is show you what happens when the radius server is not accessible and suddenly the local database will be accessible. So let's go into the switch and I'll just shut down the port which connects to the server. Enable, conf t, I think it was FAO3, and we'll just shut that down, yep. Okay, so that's now inaccessible. So, if I go, I'll exit that out, and I go and I use SSH, login, and we try the backup now, version 2, and we'll put the IP address, 192.168.1.1, and we'll try that, and we'll do backup1, Take a wee while to test it. It'll actually check. It'll see that the server is down and then fall back and hopefully log in. That's what I hope, anyway. Yeah, see, it took its time. It essentially was trying to authenticate with the server. It could see that the server was inaccessible and then fell back to the default of the local database. So, Essentially, that is a short video on how to configure AAA 
and how to configure a radius server. The next one I'll do will be a TACAX one and it's pretty much the exact same process. You just change TACAX for radius. So yep, that's the end of the video and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.